One of my herb teachers was Bill Mitchell. Bill Mitchell was a founder of John Bastier University in Seattle. And Bill told me about two of his Alzheimer's patients, both who took saffron tea. Now, one of the patients, all they did is take a couple cups of saffron tea a day. And supposedly this person was able to halt their Alzheimer's disease memory loss. And the other patient had the same experience. They used safflower, uh, saffron tea, excuse me, every day, but then they also supplemented that with an IV, IV nutrients that they received at Bastyr University. So both of these patients were able to halt their Alzheimer's disease. That's really encouraging. And the other encouraging thing is that saffron tea can be taken for people with all ages to help boost their brain health. So today we're gonna to be talking about the best teas for brain health. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and be sure to hit the alert button to be notified of new videos each week. Okay, so we talked about uh, saffron. Now let's look at two of my best friend herbs. My two, two of my best friend herbs are ginseng and astragalus. And um, ginseng has been around for a long time. Astragalus is one of the herbs that I helped popularize in the United States. And what I wanna tell you about is that both ginseng and astragalus are very good for nourishing the brain. And there's some studies that show that both are, are, are neuroprotective. But the most important take home message today is that these herbs work best in a combination with other ingredients. So there's a, a, a old Chinese formula, it's called Gui Pi Tang, and what that means is restore the spleen tonic. And the spleen in Chinese medicine is not just the Western anatomical spleen. It's also part of the immune system, the spleen, and also part of the pancreas. So the spleen energy is nourished by this formula, Guipitang. And it doesn't just contain ginseng and astragalus. It contains ginseng, astragalus, other Chinese herbs like a tract of lotus, it contains licorice, longan fruit, dangue, uh, jujubes, poria, polygala, sauceria, ginger. So it has a number of different ingredients. And of course, there's different varieties of this formula. So what this formula is specifically good, I've, had a, I've used this formula with thousands of people with chronic fatigue syndrome. And it's a great formula for chronic fatigue syndrome because it lessens fatigue and helps the body adjust to sleep. So um, sometimes we have clients in the clinic who would be just too exhausted to exercise. And then they'd lie down you know, uh, to go to sleep and they'd be, their mind would be racing and their body would be hurting. And for many of these clients, this is a great formula. But the other important take home message, in addition to using ginseng and astragalus with other herbs, is that these really should be prescribed by an acupuncturist who, who knows uh, Chinese herbs. And that's because uh, there's a whole diagnostic system with Chinese medicine. And it's not just there's one herb for insomnia, there are formulas for people with insomnia based upon the uh, person's constitution and their symptoms. So basically a football player with insomnia would typically be uh, treated very differently from a grandmother who's 80 and has insomnia. So we talked about um, saffron that's also used in Chinese medicine, but for here we're talking about using it as a simple tea. There's uh, ginseng and astragalus, both uh, powerful brain teas, but best used in combination. And now we'll look at, at mint. Now, the interesting thing about mint is that um, spearmint has been well studied for uh, brain health. And um, now there was a study that they did on elderly people showing that a extract of spearmint was uh, brain nourishing. They also did a study with um, healthy uh, individuals, men and women 18 to 50, 
and they received 900 milligrams of a spearmint extract or a placebo or sugar pill. And they uh, basically assessed their cognitive performance. And what they showed is that the spearmint extract showed improvements in sustained attention at both 30 and 90 day levels. So let me explain that. So in as, as few as 30 days after taking this extract of spearmint, people were able to focus on an activity over a longer period of time. And so this is particularly important in chronic fatigue syndrome, in fibromyalgia, in long COVID, when we have brain fog. The ability to sustain the attention is very, very important. And so I think that spearmint is really an up and coming uh, dementia or cognitive herb. Um, and let's talk about how, how we can use it. So obviously the people who did the studies would, would like you to use their, their particular capsule of spearmint, but you could also just use spearmint or peppermint tea in just tea bag form. Now be sure to look for a version of spearmint or peppermint tea that doesn't have caffeine, but they can be used interchangeably. As an herbalist, we use these interchangeably. Yeah, there are some differences. Uh, spearmint uh, is probably considered a little bit more cooling by herbalists and considered less bitter. So it's a, a spearmint is considered sweeter. A uh, peppermint, if you've noticed, um, if you steep it uh, for a few minutes, it's very nice and light. But if you continue to steep it for over 20 minutes, it's, it's actually quite bitter. So um, if you can only get a peppermint in your area, just use peppermint. Uh, but if you can't get spearmint and you like it, well, use spearmint instead. So this is a great herb to consider for brain uh, teas. And the last thing I want to say about mint is talk about the, the uh, brain-gut connection, right? So when Andrew uh, sips some peppermint tea, not only does my brain feel clearer, but also my tummy feels clearer too. What, what about you? Do you, have you? do you notice that if you take a peppermint tea or spearmint tea that you notice an immediate effect? Let me know what you think. So the next uh, final herb we're gonna talk about, well, there's final two. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, about tea and then rosemary, uh, the herb prepared as tea. Now, tea is kind of a bonus herb. We've talked about that in other podcasts, but tea, especially green tea, is also neuroprotective. So let's talk about the final one, that's rosemary tea. Now, rosemary has many benefits. It can be used topically, as well as taken into a tea, tea form. And uh, rosemary possesses antioxidant and anti-inflammatory capability. Uh, uh, rosemary also has been shown to lower blood sugar. It improves mood and memory. And, um, and they've actually done studies showing the topical administration of rosemary. That's just applying it to the back of your neck and add it to a um, lotion or just inhaling the vapors from rosemary essential oil can help clear up the brain and help improve uh, thinking. Uh, so uh, rosemary um, supports brain health, and um, it also has some effects on preparing, uh, helping to protect the heart as well. This concludes today's podcast, Best Teas for Brain Health. Let us know what you think. Do you use herbs for brain health? We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe. That really helps us. And let us know what you think. For more information, visit our website getwellfoundation.org. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.